it's uh, strange as well when you see uh, men from the West or let's say in, uh, in Australia, they're just different than men here. Uh, in Bulgaria, it's more traditional um, gender roles and gender, gender stereotypes than in the West. Yeah. West, I think, is more towards merging, I guess, mm -hmm. what men and women can be in society and in the workplace or in any sense of the word. Mm -hmm that it's becoming less like uh, traditional in the men is meant to be the strong strong guy who's a uh, provider and things like this and the woman does. Yeah, she's like... Yeah. <laughs> Fe very extremely feminine and um, cares for the family and things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more common here um, to, to see this. Obviously it's changing a little bit, mm -hmm. but in Australia it's completely being flipped on its head, um, yeah. I'd say. Uh, obviously there needs to be still more progress made, but Comparing Australia to here is very different in how mm -hmm. um, this is perceived and how actually people act and portray this upon themselves as well because I think here the men are more I need to be like this because it's what I'm meant to be like and oh. and Australians are more eh, whatever I can be the way. There is some kind of image that people here are really thriving to um, to put themselves into and uh, it's sad of course it's changing before it was uh even more like to the extreme where we really the woman was at home and now i think a lot of i see a lot of women working and being like strong and but i see it as i still see it and they, people here don't realize it but if you go into the west and you live there and then when you come here and you're like wow i have to be i just even now i feel changed i still need to get myself into the this this role i guess or I just feel, I feel I feel a different person here and a different person that's in the UK. Like I just wanted to ask uh, because that's that's so interesting what you said about gender roles. Have you had like any kind of weird situations where you wouldn't have uh, in Australia? I've heard of cases where here people expect you to pay on first dates mm -hmm. more than they would in Australia. However, I haven't come across that as much. Mm -hmm. Like me, I split, but yeah, um, in a lot of cases, I think men, uh, from what I've heard from roommates or friends uh the men are always wanting to pay mm -hmm. yeah, um true. and it, it's not a fight but it's like i have to pay because it shows off my masculinity and things like mm -hmm. this i'm yeah. not a provider and again it comes with the gender roles gender stereotypes that are more enforced here yeah. um the biggest thing though for me is the impact of astrology um, <laughs> upon every relationship uh basically if you like I'm a Libra, for example, I am not meant to be friends with some people, and they're like, "You're a Libra, you're like this," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, true, and true, true. I don't get along with Libras, and I'm like, I'm kind of confused, like, <laughs> by this because in Australia it doesn't necessarily matter where and when you're born, like what minute you're born in and which mm -hmm. part of the world. Um, it's based on like your are uh, your parents and your friends, your surroundings, how you turn out as a person rather than what star sign you're born under. And here it's, it, not, <laughs> it doesn't matter who your parents are or anything like this, it's all dependent on what minute of the day you were born on what date, um, at what time, basically. Yeah. And that comes with dating, that comes with work, work relationships, friend relationships, and this is the biggest, the craziest thing for me, is oh. I'm like, I don't know, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. But did they so ask you, let's see, let's see. First thing. Uh, like, really? Yeah, it's one of the first I things. I asked this as well, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the first things they ask you, and you're like, this is, <laughs> this is interesting to me. Uh, it's a huge, mm. it's a huge deal here, actually. Huge. I've now realized when I was uh, again in London, people were so, uh, they, they don't believe in that. Usually, no. the, most, the majority are like, astrology, that's stupid. For here, it's like, it's science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, but it's it's actually it's not it's not science it's a pseudo science can I say it's yep. pseudo science pseudo science I think there is some that are true but you cannot base your relationship on that you cannot say oh but you're Libra so sorry I'm just gonna yeah I've heard stories about people <laughs> walking out on dates oh my god really yeah. no I didn't know that like yeah I've heard stories about this no that's yeah, that's like, too you're a Scorpio drastic. sorry I gotta end it here I had a bad experience with the Scorpio so see you later. Yeah, okay. not to me, but like I've heard of this. <laughs> okay, not yeah. to me. <laughs> a friend told me about this, but yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm not Scorpio, so it's fine. Wow. Okay, that's um, 
Yeah, you, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. It's very popular here, and even people that are not into those stuff, they still like know their sign. They still know even what kind of uh, let's say how is it called the. Um, it was Ascendant. Ascendant, exactly. Yeah. Ascend they don't they know that. I think you have to because you get asked asked it all the time, so <laughs> yeah. you need to know. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> and how actually how did you find um the air here, like in Sofia especially? Because I know that in Tasmania it's the clearest air. I am probably you've been there. I haven't been to Tasmania. I have been to New Zealand, which is yeah, so it's, one of, it's still yeah, New Zealand and yeah. in Australia probably it's the air is clearer than yeah. It seems fine to me. The biggest thing is people smoke a lot here, and I, I'm not a big fan of smelling cigarette smoke, so that's the biggest deterrent to me breathing in fresh air. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, um, I guess, the people pollution part of the, of uh, Sofia because in Australia people don't smoke so much. Probably a quarter of the amount of smokers. Whoa. Yeah, because it's probably a quarter of the price here to smoke. I had this perception that people in Eastern Europe smoke. Mm -hmm. um, a fair bit more and I had heard of before I arrived like a part of my team basically they have cigarettes for breakfast with their uh, benetza and their coffee mm -hmm. as the Bulgarian breakfast is uh, what they call it um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah and can I ask you do you there's is there something that you miss um, that you, you cannot find here but you find in Australia or New Zealand or somewhere else but we don't have it here Generally, you can find almost anything to do in Sofia that you mm -hmm. can in Sydney. Um, I would say the strangest thing for me is no real water source. So, like, I'm used to being close to a harbour because I've been in okay. a harbour city yeah. my entire life. So, it's a bit strange for me that there's no, like, place to go because all of our cities are based around harbours. Yeah. So, for me, the city of centre, I'm like, where is the city centre? Because there's no harbour to go to. But... Probably the variety of food because I'm used to eating like a lot of Thai food, Indian food, mm -hmm. places like this, and yeah. uh, making my own um, using different spices and things like this, mm -hmm. which aren't that easy to find, or you can't find um, unless you go to like an Indian shop. Yeah, specific. Yeah. It's very specific. Other than that, activities. No, you can do pretty much anything here that you could do in Sydney. Okay, uh, and do, do you miss something in the conversation uh, that you have with? Uh, people from uh, New Zealand or Australia that you cannot uh, talk about in Bulgaria. There are people who are very open-minded just as there is in Australia. So I think like yourself, for example, I can talk to you about whatever. Um, so no, not necessarily. If you are always learning something new, then you're going to become more well-rounded as a person. So for me, being able to speak to Bulgarians gives me that. There's open-minded people wherever you go in the world. It's just about finding who those people are that you connect with. Okay. And any like last words? Um, can you say anything to the Bulgarians? Probably they're going to watch this in foreigners in Bulgaria. I would say I've definitely enjoyed living in Bulgaria. It's been a very interesting and let's say life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. Being able to experience something completely different from where I'm used to. And so for me, in this interview, just comparing my experiences that I've come across in Bulgaria, and mm -hmm. I can't necessarily speak for the entirety of the country, it's just my own experiences. But I think uh, Bulgaria has people here that can make progress, but even if they've been having social issues at the moment, let's say. At the end of the day, there are people here who are wanting change and wanting to make their lives better, which is really inspiring, and people work very hard to actually make their lives better, um, which is very cool. Um, it's actually a very big trend that Bulgarians move overseas. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of them move, yeah. especially in Germany, um, Holland, yeah. Netherlands, the UK. A lot of people are moving over there, and but yeah. Bulgaria in itself has a lot going for it. And yeah, I'm sure like you'll see some more Australians um, coming over here soon. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of curious after my experience from my friends, so maybe there'll be more people from Australia that I know who actually end up here. Australians, you're welcome. New Zealanders, can I say New Zealanders? Yes. New Zealanders, you're welcome as well, and everyone else. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much, Tom, for being here uh, with me and being part of my first interview in uh, the series Foreigners in Bulgaria. So, yeah, thank you so much. No worries, my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. And we'll see you. Uh, How can I end this? Stay tuned for the next, uh, the next interview. The next. Thank the you. next episode. Yes, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you for this. No worries. Bye. <laughs> cool.